Hello everyone and welcome to Bedworth Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us. In troubled times like these, we all need encouragement. And that's the theme of our service today. We have a guest speaker who will be talking about how we can encourage one another and make sure we re keep a positive attitude in life. But before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of encouragement. And we pray today through this message, you teach us how to encourage one another and, and support each other at this difficult time. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hello everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm one of the Heber Regional Ministers, and in particular, I support the churches and ministers across Birmingham South, Solihull, Coventry, Warwickshire and Herefordshire. Now, I wonder if you recall an Olympic athlete named Derek Redmond. Perhaps you remember watching the video of his famous 400 meter race in 1992, or have seen one of those photos of that injured runner being supported by his father, Jim. If not, perhaps pause this message and type his name into your search engine. You'll find lots of copies of that photo over the internet. You see, this is a powerful image and an even more inspiring story, which goes something like this. Derek Redmond, a British medal-winning athlete, set a new British record in 1985 and again in 1987 for the 400 meters. He was a member of the 400 meter relay team that won gold in the 1986 European Championships and gold again at the World Championships in 1991. But it was at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona that he became a household name. He was in great form, setting the fastest time in the first round and then winning his quarterfinal. In the semi-final, he started well, but in the back straight, about 250 meters from the finish, his hamstring tore. He sank to the ground in agony and the stretcher bearers were soon running to his aid. But Derek wanted to finish the race. So he got slowly and painfully to his feet and began hobbling along the track. The sheer agony of the effort was written all over his face. And it was at this point that a man climbed down from the crowd and drew alongside him to give him support. It was Derek's father, Jim, and together they completed the course and crossed the line. The crowd was on its feet, cheering them all the way and rewarding Derek with the loudest ovation any winner could ever ask for. Now, if you were to ask me who won that race, I would have to confess I haven't a clue, but I do know who came last because that image of encouragement and perseverance is seared into my memory. And what a wonderful picture it is too. There are times in life when all of us need some encouragement. To encourage someone means to build courage in them. And we can do that by walking with them through their time of despair, inspiring them with words of hope and giving them confidence to keep going. In our Bible reading today, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church at Thessalonica, exhorting them to encourage one another and build each other up. Why is that? What were their particular circumstances? Well, Acts chapter 17 and verses 1 to 9 describe how Paul and Silas had visited Thessalonica on Paul's third missionary journey. They'd gone first to the synagogue where they preached the good news of Jesus Christ and many Jews and God-fearing Greeks came to faith. But because of jealousy, they then suffered persecution at the hands of the other Jews. Paul and Silas were forced to leave in a hurry and they were concerned that these new converts might become weary of this trial and abandon their faith. So this letter was sent to encourage them and build them up, and in turn, to prompt them 
to encourage one another. To do so, Paul reminds them of the hope that lies ahead. Chapter 4, verses 13 to 17 is all about the coming again of the Lord, and in particular, a reminder that even if they die before seeing Christ's triumphant and glorious return, they will be raised at the trumpet sound and be with the Lord forever. What a rallying cry. And he ends these verses with this exhortation in verse 18. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Then in the next chapter, 15, verses 1 to 10, which is really the second half of the previous passage, Paul goes on to explain that the timing of Christ's return was not known, but would come upon them like a thief in the night. And whilst many who do not believe will be taken by surprise by that thief, the church will not, if they remain alert and self-controlled, living each day as if it is the day. So Paul is encouraging them to keep focused on the hope that they have in their salvation, made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, so that their suffering will pale into insignificance in comparison, and so that they will not give up. This is a common theme of Paul's letters, and elsewhere he likens the Christian journey to running a race. To the Corinthian church, he writes, run in such a way as to get the prize. To the Galatian church, he writes, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? And to Timothy, he wrote, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. And this race analogy may have prompted the author of the letter to the Hebrews, who were also Jewish converts experiencing persecution, to write, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. What a wonderful image this is. And for the letter's recipients, who were well acquainted with the Greek games, how helpful this must have been in keeping them focused and persevering. A source of great encouragement and hope. And this analogy of the Christian's life as a marathon to be completed, often gruelling and sometimes painful, is still so relevant and powerful today. Indeed, Whenever I read these words, my mind's eye is filled with an image of a great stadium packed with cheering crowds, encouraging the athletes to run their best, finish the race and receive their reward. And then I'm brought back to that image of a fallen and injured Derek Redmond. And as I gaze on the image of his father drawing alongside him, I'm reminded that God took on flesh and came down in Jesus to live amongst us, to show us the way, to help us overcome the obstacles, to give us a hope and to help us to finish well. In fact, when I look at it, even the way Jim Redmond is supporting his son in that picture reminds me of Jesus's invitation in Matthew's Gospel. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, that's it. Derek and his father, Jim, look like they're yoked together, don't they? Jim holding Derek up as he walks beside him 
in his time of need. Of course, Jesus would have been familiar with the making of comfortable wooden yokes that allowed a plough to be pulled and a burden to be carried. And he is offering to be yoked together with believers to enable them to complete the tasks that they've been given and carry the burdens that weigh them down. How does this happen? Well, I think he brings people alongside us who will walk with us, work with us, and ease our burden. One of the things I love so much about scripture is how these images resonate through the ages to still bring relevant and powerful encouragement to us today. So how do we earth such big promises in our current situations and circumstances? Well, as I write and record this talk, we find ourselves deeply entrenched in the pandemic known as COVID-19. We've lived with its consequences for nearly a year already, and now we're being hit by a second wave of infections and encountering another national lockdown. Many have lost loved ones, are suffering with symptoms, or struggling with the longer term consequences of infection known as long COVID. Many have lost jobs, income, businesses, and are struggling to survive on meagre savings, benefits and grants. Many feel lost, lonely and isolated as a result of shielding or quarantine and isolation. Many are suffering with poor mental health, depression and anxiety. And for those of us who are followers of Christ, many of our church buildings are closed or only partially open. And the services, groups and activities that are our usual source of fellowship, teaching and worship are happening online or in many cases not at all. Life is hard. Faith is hard. But Jesus's invitation is still resounding loud and clear. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will help you up and walk with you and support and strengthen you. Lean on me and together we will overcome these trials and finish the race together. For I have already won the victory for you. And if you put your trust in me, you will receive your eternal reward. So these words of Paul to the Thessalonians and now to us are given firstly for our encouragement and faith building. Let us hear them, receive their truth and respond in faith. Perhaps you've never actually responded to Christ's gift of forgiveness and eternal life with him. His death on the cross and his rising again has saved you from the consequences of sin and he's offering you this salvation and reward as a gift. All you need to do is to believe it and accept it and you can know the assurance of eternal life in his glorious kingdom. Can I encourage you to do that today? to know that confidence in your future. And secondly, these words are given to inspire us to be those who would step out from the crowd and draw alongside those who are struggling and hurting. Let us be the hands, feet and mouthpiece of Christ, bringing encouragement to others, helping them to get up, to keep going, and to finish the race. For it is Christ who is the author and perfecter of our faith, and it is he who awaits us at the finish with the loudest cheers and trumpets sounding and a celebration banquet the like of which we cannot even imagine. Let us pray. Lord, we acknowledge again today that life is tough. We face many difficulties and many unknowns, and we sometimes feel beaten. As did the psalmist 
we bring our fears, anxieties, depression and anger and we lay them at your feet. We acknowledge that we need you and cannot continue without your help and support. Lord, we are so grateful that you came down to live amongst us, Emmanuel, God with us. You understand our trials and sent your Holy Spirit to be with us always, bringing us comfort, guidance and power to overcome. Thank you for your ultimate and costly sacrifice on the cross that made possible our redemption and secured for us a glorious eternity with God. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you, to draw encouragement from your example and to keep going to the end. Lord, show us how we can be your hands, feet and mouthpiece to a hurting world. Help us to be an encouragement to those we come alongside and to build them up in faith, vision and peace. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ and for the sake of the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you all.